What is a dashboard? Well, a dashboard is a representation of your KPIs, key performance indicators, metrics, and of your data, most importantly. All of these are jumbled together into creating a dashboard, what is known as a dashboard. Now, before even thinking of a dashboard, you have to really start thinking where the data is coming from. And this varies industry by industry and company by company. But one thing that remains as a factor on all of these is the types. They can be strategic, informational, analytical, and operational. Think of this, how it relates to your departments. There will be departments that are strategic in your company, others that provide informational data, or others that an analyze that data. So those would be your target types, thinking it that way, your departments, who your higher level executives will be. And that can help you target your audience accordingly by these types. There are a few guidelines that really can help your dashboard. First one, assess target audience. Why? Each individual and high level executive can be either visual oriented, data oriented, or both. That will help you form the dashboard itself. When it's visual oriented, maybe they'll have slicers, some charts, maybe no data at all. And some others might be data oriented with some flavor of charting incorporated. Others will have both charts and your data at the same time. Don't forget that also you are limited in real estate in the screen. Depending on what the standards on your corporate policies are, you might have lower resolutions or higher. If you have higher, you are really in luck because you'll be able to fit more in that type of screen. The type of data you present should be quantifiable. As mentioned before, KPIs and metrics. But this really doesn't make any distinction until you really start to think about it in how you can really measure them. They're just measures. How are you doing your sales? Are you falling short? Are you not? Are you delivering on time? Those are just a few ideas of those metrics. Alongside with, those should be filterable dynamically. We've seen slicers that allow you to filter by month, by quarter, by category. Along those guidelines, keep them in thought because they will really make your dashboard excel and give you more information so that your higher level executives can filter through it and play around with it, analyze it, gather it, provide some other usefulness towards it, and even find some faults or ideas of how to make improvements upon them. Followed by easiness of your accessibility. They should be really easy to access. That said, they could be on a share, they could be in SharePoint, they could be even in cloud data storage. But keep in mind to stick and re review your corporate policies. They might have some restriction on what comes of cloud storage. Readability and usability. These are important factors. It should be easily identifiable, usable, and readable. Slicers help greatly with that aspect, but they're not the only reason to use slicers. They are a tool to help you find information discoverability. Another factor is data freshness. Make sure you put a date when it was last updated. That could be either dynamic from your data, or even better, last date you updated it. That way you know when was the last time this dashboard was looked upon. Set some expected goals for the dashboard. Is it going to be for decision support or just finding anomalies, just assisting in that process or data analysis? 
those are good items to keep in mind because they help you form an idea of who and when will this target the audience will be using your dashboard we've discussed so far what some guidelines are for the creation of a dashboard what we haven't discussed is what a dashboard is not definitely a dashboard should not and is not inaccurate why if you're providing data that is inaccurate then there is no point of creating a dashboard that really is the whole idea of a dashboard to provide accurate data that can be easily viewed and processed and gathered and analyzed otherwise if it's inaccurate you can't make decisions on the dashboard that's another use of a dashboard it, it helps you make decisions find faults or processes that were not even thought of before it is not also a replacement for your detailed reports meaning those drill throughs we, th we saw there are some of the reports that most likely are much better suited as detailed reports it is not a replacement for those reports it helps you relate to those reports get down to that level so that you can even find and discover more data that goes at a lower level they are also not a one-time use report why because the data changes sales for instance sales continue to happen all the time it never you're never going to hear anybody say well our last sale was 10 years ago you wouldn't be in business if that was the case there's constantly sales happening and other type of data that is continuously ever changing and updating that is another reason to set what was the last date of update that said it they are also never static so how do you play with dashboard and power pivot or even in Excel you probably thought about this idea before and you're probably shouting out loud there is no out-of-the-box create dashboard functionality and that is correct you just don't go and click create dashboard there is no such option or tab or ribbon button for that what you have to do is achieve it through two concepts that we've seen so far pivot tables and pivot charts those two can be used interactively or separately as mentioned before they could be visual or not that said we know what a pivot table is so far we've used it to display our data format it filter it slice and dice it what we have not seen is how to chart it and a, that's where a pivot chart comes into play it is based on our pivot data our pivot table and when you reach that point you also have multiple types of charts and those charts are readily available through your ribbon bar that said let's go ahead and look at a demo of how we would create a pivot chart let's start from scratch and open Excel this time around we're gonna click blank workbook and we're going to establish a connection by opening power pivot and manage we're gonna get our external data from our access database clicking browse and choosing our access database we'll test a connection it's a good habit to do that always and click next we're going to continue by selecting the order details table and all those that are related to it and we'll finalize that by clicking finish we have imported the data successfully okay that said we have it readily available for us we're going to go back into Excel and we're going to go ahead and insert a pivot chart but as mentioned before we should first start with our pivot table let's use an external data connection which we have already existing in a new worksheet great let's go ahead and as usual 
choose our category from our products table and head to details and choose quantity. Great. Notice we did not choose the product name. Reasoning behind it. Well, if we do that, look what happens. We'll go back and choose it. What happens is we start adding layers. The easiest way to look at items in the dashboard is by a common denominator. In this case, the category works well. Therefore, we didn't add it for that reason. It doesn't mean that it's not important. It just means it's an easier way to visualize and categorize and group them by a category. Great. That said, you probably are thinking, well, I'm done. Not quite. As we are usual for formatting, let's go ahead and start first forming our data itself. Let's add the bars in the green or blue. This gives us a good idea. This is just data itself. Remember the, the dashboards we were talking about being either data or visual oriented? We are creating a mix and match of data and some visual. It could easily just be data in itself by just removing this data here. We can name this category as well, this column. And to that point and that effect, we have completed to a certain degree. We still have not created a chart. Now, let's go and add a chart. It is done through insert pivot chart. We click on it and we have multiple types of charts. We can have either a cluster, as we can see, different types of these. This one, these, you can click and play with any of these choices. This one looks nice, a 3D column, so let's select it. Notice that it's readily available. Now, where do we place it? It's right there. We can expand it a little bit further more. Try to make it fit. As we were talking before, real estate is of great importance here. Now, that's easy to be done, but we still have more other items to accomplish here. Let's go ahead and make it more appealing. By clicking on your chart, you have a few options here. First, colors. What colors would you like to use? Better yet, you can use the style. If you hover over them, you will be able to visualize what it would look like. These two and three actually are the ones that are more appealing from what you can see here. And probably the, the black background really adds a little bit more to it. And this one definitely is a lot more eye-catchy. Let's click this one. Notice that it's available there. So now we have data. We have also a chart. That's great. What are we missing here? Notice that the data is there, but what if somebody wants to filter? They can filter, but they're using this type of style of filter, which works, but it's not that appealing if we really start looking and thinking about it. Let's add a few rows in here to move this down. And let's go ahead and insert a slicer. What can we choose here? Our view. Click on our data table and let's go down to category. Expand. Oops. Right click on it. And notice that instead of having to go and add as a slicer, we can do it right here from the menu. Let's choose add a slicer. And we've been giving that slicer already. Let's 
modify it a little bit more, formatting it for size. It still doesn't give us enough space, but we can add more rows in here. Let's add a few more just to play with it. Let's select it and clear it. And now ready to test. We see that all of these are available for us. Let's choose three of these. There we go. The slicer is filtering accordingly. We see that it matches our data here on the left and it matches our chart. Well, that's great. Maybe they don't like the bar charts. Let's go back to the chart itself and change the chart type. Let's look at pi. This could be an option. Depending on your needs, either this or this one will work. Let's leave that as is. Notice that it gives you already which categories were chosen. So right now we have our data here available. And this is how you would add a pivot chart to your dashboard.